the game's dignitaries. First came the premier of British Columbia, Gordon Campbell. And this to me, is he like the president? Like, like the president is for the U.S., or is it more of a provincial thing? I'm not sure. Like a governor. Okay, so in the province, he's more of a governor. Oh, and I love that word, tumultuous. I'm going to use blue for that word. I don't know what that is. I love it. Well, what do you think it means here? Amid tumultuous applause. A crazy one. Yeah, like a crazy applause, right? Um, Gordy Howe, one of the legends of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, the announcer, boom, Mr. Hockey. And I know he's from the Red Wings because my hubby's a big Red Wings fan. <laughs> for the, <laughs> you don't have to write down what I write. You annotate how you like, okay? For the next 60 minutes, I would annotate what you want to write. Yeah, write down what you want to write. What do you annotate about? That's a great question. what you're annotating about. You can annotate what I'm annotating. What you think, yep. How you feel about certain things, observations, questions, vocab words you like, words that you recognize, whatever you like, okay? For the next 60 minutes, the two teams played spirited, aggressive hockey. Vancouver scored first early in the second period on a rebound by Mario Bliznak. Late in the second period, well, then you would write this. You'd write, who was that? <laughs> Late in the second period, it was Medicine Hat's turn as the team's scoring leader, Darren Helm, who is that? <laughs> fired a quick shot past Vancouver's goalie, Tyson Sexsmith. Vancouver answered in the third period, scoring the game's deciding goal, and then when Medicine Hat pulled its goalie in desperation, Vancouver scored a third time. Now, because I'm not a huge hockey fan, I need to read this again to myself to see what it actually said. Hold on. Who's Medicine Hat? It's one of the teams, right? That's weird. How do you know that? Because he plays hockey. Because it says it on the page before. And then Medicine Hat got one. And then Vancouver got two. And Vancouver got three. Okay, so it was Vancouver three, Medicine Hat one. That's that's pretty big scoring for a hockey th team, I think, right? Three to one? Is that a lot? Not really? Okay. In the aftermath of the game, the players and their families and sports reporters from across the country crammed into the winning team's locker room. I like that word, so I'm just going to circle it. Crammed? I don't. Yeah. Well, then don't circle it. <laughs> the air was filled with cigar smoke and the smell of champagne and sweat-soaked hockey gear. Yeah. Ew. On the wall was a hand-painted banner, Embrace the Struggle. In the center of the room, the Giants coach, Don Hay, stood misty-eyed. I'm just so proud of these guys, he said. Just look around the locker room. There isn't one guy who didn't buy in wholeheartedly. Canadian hockey is a meritocracy. Now that to me shouts, what? I don't know what that is. Thousands of Canadian boys begin to play the sport at the novice level. I knew this is new or beginner. Before they are even in kindergarten. Wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> From that point on, there are leagues for every age class, and at each of those levels, the players are sifted and sorted and evaluated, with the most talented separated out and groomed for the next level. I just like all those verbs in a row. I think it's pretty cool. By the time players reach their mid-teens, the very best of the best have been channeled into an elite league known as Major Junior A, which is the top of the pyramid. And because I like to draw... I'm going to draw a pyramid. Am I, that's not a very good pyramid. So they're at the top of this pyramid. And if your major junior A team played Memorial Cup, that means you're at the very top of the top of the pyramid. So these two teams, this Vancouver Medicine Hat, must have been the best of the best. This is the way most sports pick their future stars. I'm like, is it really? It's the way soccer is organized in Europe and South America. And it's the way Olympic athletes are chosen. For that matter, it's not all that different from the way the world of classical music picks its future virtuosos, or the way the world of ballet picks its future ballerinas, or the way our education, elite educational system picks its future scientists and intellectuals. So I'm seeing he's talking that it's happening in sports, in the arts, and in education. And what is it? What's, what is the way they pick it? It's, I guess it's the elite of the elite, right? Like they keep sifting them out and grooming them. You can't buy your way into major junior A hockey. It doesn't matter who your father or mother is or who your grandfather was or what business your family in, is in. Nor does it matter if you live in the most remote corner of the most northerly province in Canada. If you have ability, the vast network of hockey scouts and talent spotters will find you. And if you are willing to work to develop the ability, the system will reward you. This makes me think of what you guys were saying for the 
the personality traits for successful people, right? You have to have the knowledge and you have to work hard. Success in hockey is based on individual merit. And both of these words are important. Okay, so I'm going to separate them. I know what individual is. That's being one. But I have to figure out what merit means. Merit badges. What are merit badges? You earn them. You earn them for what? Hard work. Hard work? Goal achieving. Goal achieving? Okay. Players are judged on their own performance. That goes back to individual. Not on anyone else's. On, on the basis of their ability. Not on some, arbit some other arbitrary facts. So maybe that merit is that ability or their skill or what they earn. And then he throws in a question. It's, or are they? So Don't are know. people actually based on this? Yeah, what's that, what does that do to you when he asks that what? question? I'm like, something's coming what? up. What? What are you talking like, Something's coming up, right? Like maybe. It changes your perspective a little bit. You're like, what? What's it's he going like, to say next? It makes me think, oh, maybe they're not. Maybe actually, they're not. Maybe it does matter. So why does the author do that? Why does he ask you that question then? So he hooks you in. He hooks you in. Yes, he wants you to keep reading. So is that like the lead? It could, well, it's a hook, I think, but it's the end of this section, right? That's the only section we're reading today, so before we, we do anything else, I want you to jot down what I know. So on the side of this paper, just write down what I know, and write down one to three, two, blah, one to three, one to three things that you know from this section. What is he saying? What's he talking about? What I know about what? About this section. 